In my videos, I've emphasized that to be approved for Social Security Disability, in most circumstances, your work-related limitations are much more important than your diagnosis. But there are some conditions where Social Security will approve disability based on the diagnosis alone. The work-related limitations don't come into play. I'm going to go over those conditions in this video. Hello, I'm John Foster. I'm a medical doctor who does Social Security Disability exams. I've done quite a few of them. And as usual, everything I say reflects my own opinions based on my own experience and study and not the opinions of the Social Security Administration or any other medical body. Now, like I said at the outset, if you can es establish that you have one of these diagnoses, Social Security will approve you for disability as long as you're not working beyond what they call substantially gainful activity. You will have to prove the diagnosis and that usually requires n documents from physicians and often tests such as blood tests or imaging studies. To start off with, I want to talk about what conditions will not qualify based on the diagnosis alone. And first off, all mental health conditions, all psychiatric conditions will not qualify based on diagnosis alone. Only one musculoskeletal condition problems with the bones, joints, muscles, and tendons will qualify. Neck problems, back problems, arthritis, all require documentation of work-related limitations. However, if you have a double amputation, two limbs amputated, you qualify. For this, Social Security requires both arms both legs or one arm and one leg. For the arm, they require the amputation to be at the level of the wrist or higher. That means that having fingers alone amputated will not qualify. For the leg, they require the amputation at the ankle or higher. That means amputations of the toes won't qualify. That is the only musculoskeletal system that qualifies for disability based on diagnosis alone. Now, to get into the rest of the conditions, most of them are very bad and severe, and many of them are fatal. If you have the condition, you will likely die from it. There are some rare exceptions. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the temporary conditions. There are some conditions where Social Security will approve disability payments for between 12 to 24 months of the onset of the diagnosis. After that period, whether your disability benefits continue depends on your condition. The first of these is kidney failure. If you have kidney failure requiring dialysis, artificial kidney, either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, you will be considered disabled from 12 months from the onset of the dialysis. The rest of the conditions are related to organ transplantation, where you have an organ that is failing or has failed and you receive a replacement organ from another person. Transplantations of the heart or lung or liver or pancreas or small intestine qualify for disability for 12 months from the date of transplantation. Now, after that, whether or not your disability benefits continue depends on your work-related limitations. And I've seen some people who've done very well after organ transplantation. For example, I was the ringside doctor for a mixed martial arts 
competition where one of the fighters was a young man who'd had a heart transplant. Obviously, he was in great shape to be a competitive fighter. If you've had a stem cell transplant, which is a bone marrow transplant, you will qualify for disability for 12 to 24 months, depending on the reason for the transplant. If you're on the waiting list for a heart, lung, liver, or small bowel transplant, that means that your organ has failed severely, but you have not yet received a transplant, you will qualify as a Terry case, terminal illness case, and will receive expedited approval of disability benefits. You cannot qualify if you're waiting for a kidney or a cornea transplant. There are many conditions in children, most of them in newborns or young infants, which qualify for disability based on the diagnosis. M most of them are quite rare, extremely severe, don't have any good treatment, and result in death. There's, I'm not going to go into all of them because they are rare and there are a lot of them. I will leave a link in the description to this video below for the pediatric conditions. Next, there are conditions which are not related to cancer which qualify for disability based on the diagnosis alone. Again, most of them are very severe. The first is if the person is in a coma and they have been in a coma for a minimum of 30 days, they qualify for disability. The second is if they have heart or lung failure or both and they're on a machine, a device that supports their heart or lung function and they require continuous oxygen. They have to re receive oxygen 24 hours a day and they're unable to perform self-care such as bathing or preparing a meal. They qualify for disability. The next set of conditions are conditions related to cancer. There are certain cancers which are so severe and have such a poor outcome that having that cancer alone qualifies a person for disability. These are cancers of the esophagus, gallbladder, mesothelioma, which is a cancer of the lining of the lung, usually related to asbestos exposure. Most cases of cancer of the pancreas, but not all, what's known as small cell or oat cell cancer of the lung, which is a less common form of lung cancer, and two types of leukemia. The first is called acute lymphocytic leukemia, or ALL, and the second is acute myelogenous leukemia, called AML. I've actually known two people who had AML, not patients, friends. One died about 30 days after being diagnosed. The other one had chemotherapy followed by stem cell transplantation and was actually cured, is living in good health. However, if they were not working, they would qualify for disability, a very unusual situation. For all other cancers to qualify based on diagnosis alone, one of four things has to be present. Either first, the cancer has distant metastases. That means the cancer has spread to parts of the body far from where the cancer is located. As an example, if a person has breast cancer 
and if the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes in the same armpit as the side of the breast, that would not qualify. However, if the cancer has spread to the spine or to the brain, that would qualify. The next is if a cancer is what doctors call inoperable. That means normally surgery would be used to remove the cancer and hopefully cure the patient. But for whatever reason, the surgeon determines that it would be impossible to remove the cancer without causing severe harm or death. The third reason is what doctors call unresectable. That means that a surgeon has operated hoping to remove all the cancer, but when the patient's body is opened up, the surgeon realizes that it's impossible to remove all the cancer, and the patient will be left after surgery with the cancer. And the fourth is what's called recurrence after treatment. That means a patient has been diagnosed with cancer and they've been treated, whether that's with surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or some combination of those three. And they initially appear to be doing well, but then the cancer comes back in any part of the body. That's recurrence after treatment and that qualifies for disability. Those are basically the conditions where a person can be approved for disability based on the diagnosis alone. All others require demonstration of inability to perform work-related activities. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and as always, remember, if it happens, it's possible.